Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today. First, let me just say it was really nice to see a lot of positive uh, comments and just positivity on in general on the last video. Uh, whenever you make a new video on YouTube and try to return, it's, it's quite nice to have that kind of support going on. So thanks very much for that. Uh, I will be trying to pump out videos regularly for you guys uh, in the coming days and weeks. And especially when new leaders come out and stuff, I'll be trying to, you know, uh, get a deck out with each of those kind of new leaders and talk about how strong they are and stuff like that. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to do any kind of impressions on it and leave that to other people. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. That's coming on April 2nd, by the way, if you weren't aware. Uh, new leaders for every faction, as well as some you know changes to a lot of cards. But I have a deck for you today, and that's what we're here to talk about, really. Uh, and it is a Nilfgaard deck. I haven't really... Uh, I haven't actually played any kind of Imperial Formation thing on my channel because I haven't really, uh, you know, um, well maybe I did, I'm not sure, at one point I might have put one up in a, a cheeky meta snapshot type video, but that's besides the point. Uh, we have here a very optimised, very powerful uh, Nilfgaard deck that I was playing uh, to finish my placements with. I did pretty well with the placements, I didn't do amazingly, the win rate was decent, it was 60% uh, maybe-ish, something around that, I don't know exactly. But just a pretty good win rate. And the deck is just solid. You know, you've had uh, many people playing this, many pros playing similar versions to this. There are many ways you can play Imperial Formation. Uh, you know, you don't have to play Kingslayer, which is kind of what this deck is um, focusing on. That's the kind of key card uh, that I think is very powerful. You don't have to play Raymond, but he's pretty very, you know, he's very good. <laughs> so uh, people often do. Um, but you can play Poison Package, you can mix around things like Yennefer's Invocation and Peter, which are my tool removal cards in this deck. You don't have to run those, you could run Poisons, you could just not run the tool removal entirely and just say whatever, I don't care that much about, you know, defeating the Eguns and the, uh, you know, the, the Souls and, and whatever uh, that the opponents can play. Uh, but yeah, very kind of optimised deck and at this point there's a lot of cards that you know you definitely want in there, the Damien. The Stefan, they just work super well with this leader ability. You're boosting your guys up, protecting them from damage, uh, keeping them behind the defender potentially. You can defender, use the battle preparation that he spawns on a different soldier and boost for Fion with uh, leader charges to play around certain cards. You just have a lot of flexibility. You have Diviner to unlock your guys and proc the uh, simulate loads of times. Hefty Helga is another huge engine that really just destroys everything when you're able to get it on board alongside Stefan and Bribery. Then you're just throwing out tactics all over the place, killing all of their units, uh, and just really destroying them with both bursts of big tempo from things like Damien, and sort of that long round value in the Helga uh, and the, the Stefans. And the Letho is really nice because it allows you to have another of these big powerful cards. You can either play another Damien, another Stefan, another Hefty Helga, or you can even play another Defender, which can come in, in handy uh, from now, uh, you know, from time to time. Uh, you can also just take the opponent's stuff if they happen to have a, a useful engine, maybe the Beast. That's a very good target for Letho as well, um, if the opponent's playing monsters. Uh, or, you know, other engines of that nature you can use Letho uh, to really gain some value from. And of course you have this Afan, which comes out with your leader. Very powerful 13 point leader. Probably the strongest just raw points in the game. Of course you do pay a bit of a cost by putting this card in your deck. But overall it's a small price to pay to have so many points at your disposal throughout the game. You can kind of ration them out to push round one, push round two. You know, uh, bleed the opponent, defend your engines. Just a really solid leader overall. Um, and yeah, we have a big soldier package of course as well with Raymond. Crossbowman to kind of get long round value, control the board with the damage and the spearman. Uh, now the bronzes are a little bit flexible. For example, you don't have to play two tortoise. You could play one Albert Armored Cavalry for the lock. I can just show you what that looks like. Uh, this guy, if you value the lock, it's very good for mirror matches, for example. You can ram in it as well and get two locks. But I'm playing tortoise, I think it's a safe option and it's just strong all of the time. You could also play a bomb heaver, you know, if you want. Uh, to deal with the artifacts, as always. Uh, otherwise, we do have two Magni Divisions, which is a little bit questionable. I think some people like only running one in case you end up having two in hand. It can be awkward. I like two. I think the card is very good, so uh, people often end up killing the first one you play anyway. And you can play everything in range for with this deck. 
you know, your Menno is kind of the only row locked card that you have. It can be a bit awkward if you have Magic Lamp plus Menno, so just be kind of aware of that and the sequencing and which row you're going to play in with your Magni, but I think having two of them is pretty fine. Other than that, the deck is pretty just locked in, um, this version at least. If you want to go the Poison route, I'm not going to make a video on that, but you could do that, uh, and it's probably quite strong as well. Uh, but yeah, this deck is very, very powerful, and it's kind of only weak matchups tend to be, I think, Syndicate and Squirtel. Now, those factions are quite popular, um, but you can definitely win against both of them still, particularly if you get Red Coin and Bully. And really, your other matchups across the board, I think, are just quite favoured. Uh, I guess Skellige could be a bit problematic sometimes if, you know, the game doesn't go uh, how you want it to. Um, but pretty much everything else, you know, you're going to crush gimmicky decks, you're going to crush monsters completely. Uh, I, I find anyway if you play it correctly. Um, but yeah, let's just jump into some games and see how the deck performs. Alright, looks like we're going to be up against monsters first. And we've got the red coin, which is really nice. Going to allow us to bully or just get out of the round, depending on what we think is best to do. So against this guy, we probably don't want Magnes. They're just going to get eaten up by his uh, natural selection cards. So I think I'll get rid of, of that. And then pr probably a Spearman or a Recruit. Both of them are not going to be super good here. Get rid of the Spearman. So we'll see how we want to play it. We can definitely just play three cards and pass, and we'll probably be favoured. My hand isn't super good, so I think I'll want to push a bit more than that. Like, I have a lot of cards I can play this round. Okay, so he does start with Lava. Now one play we could make is Royal Decree Raymond. And just go in with the crossbowman. And I kind of do like that approach. It'll mean we get quite a lot from him and we'll be able to play down to quite a small number of cards. So I think here, I think, you know, it makes sense to do that. There's definitely an approach as well where you just play three cards and pass against this deck. I think doing that kind of depends on having a pretty decent hand. You kind of would like to have all of your good stuff in hand if you, if you go for that. You know, the Helga, the Kingslayer. Right now we have, you know, a bit too many bronzes to go for that approach, I think. So instead we'll just try to answer the lava efficiently and play the round. And yeah, we'd be looking for bribery, for Fion. I mean, we have bribery with Menno, so it's not entirely true, but... Egon is going to come down, and that is a pretty juicy invocation target. We don't have to use it just yet, though. We're going to play the crossbow first to deal with that lava to get some engines on the board. Remember, you always want to place your soldiers kind of adjacent so your spearmen get value in case some of them die. And in case, you know, maybe you want to play a Magni on the other row or something. It's worth thinking about. And wow, we've actually got a Kiki more Warrior. I think we're just going to snipe that very easily with the spearmen. Potentially, we don't even have to invocate the... Oh, that was weird. Why didn't the other one shoot? I guess it's just some kind of bug. There's quite a lot. Oh no, never mind. It hit the armor. What am I talking about? Didn't see the animation. <laughs> we'll just deal with that guy. And then Invocate gives us a really large tempo play if we want it. I was going to say we could maybe try to just kill this normally, naturally. But I think the invocation makes sense. The other target that you can invocate is the beast. And that can be really good for you. The beast is a very, very powerful card as well. Now we could commit a leader charge to kind of pressure this out and try to win on even, but I don't think it's very logical. I think most likely with this Thrive unit on board and, you know, stuff like Goliath, like it's very easy for him to just stay in the round, even if we use leader charges right now. So, we'll just play some kind of weaker cards. Hitting the armor is probably not ideal right now, but that's okay. Okay, that's uh, an interesting move. Going to just get rid of the Egon from our deck. Makes sense. It does give us a nice Peter. A 10 value. I think that's the best we're going to really find in this game. So I think I'm going to take it. And it does get us ahead. And force him to play more good stuff. A little bit of a risky play. You know, he plays a 4 point card in order to get rid of the Egon for later. Quite often you'll see monster players do that. But it can be a little bit risky. Okay, the beast does come down. We don't have invo for it anymore. So that's a bit of a shame, but a good player is always going to play around that, uh, I think. So I think actually the play here is probably Damien, and the reasoning for that is it will get us ahead, 
The beast isn't tr triggering another time. If I play Tortoise, the beast will trigger. So Damien gets us ahead. We can actually also commit a leader charge to it if we want to play around Parasite. Probably we should do that, to be honest. Uh, he won't be able to kill it with Immerus Wrath, so it's basically going to have to be a Heat Wave. Or just a Heat Wave, really. And otherwise we're going to be winning on even, it looks like, because this play is very, very scary. And if he has a Heat Wave, then it's kind of annoying, but the Beast still won't trigger in that, in that case. Alright, so we're just going to kind of get this Imperial Formation value now. We could play Stefan, but I don't think that's worth it. I think we want to hold on to that for later. I'm just going to kind of push up to the edge with, with this Tortoise, I think, and then get out of here. And we're going to basically get carryover from Damien, which is quite nice. We're going to be able to pull the Defender, refresh the ability, play the Tortoise. And, you know, if we want to threaten the win on even, we can play Stefan here. The problem is, I just feel like Stefan's such a useful card later with Kingslayer and such. To be fair, that might actually be the correct play in this situation. I don't know. I think I think we're kind of getting we're kind of getting there. We might be able to win just by playing Menno, um, just playing Menno for simply points and not bravery. Like I really value Stefan as a card, and you know we can probably play Stefan anyway. Next play, because he's not he's like very far behind at this stage. He does have Beast and thrive unit but we also have this crossbow and it looks like we're actually going to get glusty so that's really good for us it means his last card probably isn't playable right now or it, he doesn't want to play it so it's maybe an even bigger finisher than glusty something like osrael maybe could be so at this point we're kind of just happy i feel like we've managed to get three of his leader charges one of his finisher cards, the Beast is gone, Goliath, Gigan. He's kind of running out of uh, good cards. Now, there's definitely a consideration to play the Menno here and see the last card of him. It might not be very playable right now. It might even be an A-Rush that he just can't play. Um, and then we could win on even by, by you know playing Menno here. So definitely considering it. I don't really want to play the bribery because it's such a valuable card. So maybe we just go with the Menno into battle prep and use some uh, use some leader charges with that as well. Okay. This may not be worth it in the grand scheme of things, but I figure if he's willing to play the Glusty there, then this last card is probably just not playable straight up. Well, maybe it is, but it's a very strong card. So probably this trade is worth it. We thin out one bad card. We don't have to deal with that in round two. And yeah, okay. Predatory dive. So it was kind of not a very playable card in that situation for him. It's interesting that he decided to keep that, actually. Um, so I think we just take the win. We do, you know, use our Stefan, which is a big, big card, but we've still got Helgas. I know I said I really valued this, but I think at this point winning on even is just worth it. Uh, I think... I think we're going to be able to find a win quite easily with that nine point leader that we have. He still only has one, <laughs> one point leader. So we're kind of two cards up in a way now that we won on even. He doesn't have a leader. Yes, we used kind of our finishers, but at the same time, we still have some power in our deck. You know, we've got the bribery now as well. That's really helpful. We've got the defender. And Helga, we're looking for that. So I think we're just going to mulligan, try to find it. Get the Afan. So here, we could just play Fion and, and go kind of risky. We could also pass. And it's quite interesting. We can definitely lose this game if we don't find Helga, I feel like, and if we pass here. It's very unlikely, though, because we're just going to kind of equal him with a few of our plays. And yeah, he might have some really nice big lads, but he has used most of his, you know, a lot of his good power. Um, Osrael's a bit scary. We could go for the bribery now, but I don't really want to play into uh, Predatory Dive too much. I want to have the ability to play around that. I don't want to just give him the card back. If I open with Fion or Bribery and he Predatory Dives, then I'm kind of just losing the card. And that wouldn't be ideal, I don't think. Plus with the fan, we don't really have much potential. It might have been correct to keep the Magni and just kind of play it here. Uh, and see what happens. But I think we do need to look for Helga. Because without Helga, our... 
Kingslayer is also kind of weaker. But we got both of them, so that's quite good. Um, all right. I think I'm going to hold on to Tortoise. To be honest, this whole hand's pretty good. I could get rid of maybe the Spearman and look for a Tactic or, or a Magni. Those are probably a little bit better here. Okay, so just a bit of lava coming down at the moment. We could probably go ahead and play the Magni. It'll, it'll most likely die to natural selection, but that's okay. Just want to kind of get that rolling. Get that one rolling a little bit. I want to basically defend my Helga with the Defender, potentially, here. Need to be a little bit careful of Predatory Dive, because he showed us that he plays that, and we really don't want Helga to get answered, I think. So, what is the play here? I think just a Tortoise. Just take it easy. We don't need to commit the Helga yet. And kind of wait it out, play a waiting game. To be fair, I could have played the Helga actually there and boosted it, and it would have been safe from Predatory Dive, so that was maybe the play. Um, rather than this, yeah, that probably would have been a bit better. We're not going to be able to kill the Lava with Helga anyway, though. But now I kind of am locked into double boosting Helga, probably. Which is kind of terrible for me to do. So honestly, we might just go for kind of the safe approach, which is just play Defender. We're going to lose some value for sure. We're going to lose quite a bit of value, actually. Hmm. Kind of a tricky one. Like, I might actually just be uh, quite far behind on points here, right? Hmm, what's the best way to play this? I think it's probably just Fion now. And boost him once. I think that's the play. And we're gonna throw the we're gonna throw the battle prep on this guy. So we're gonna boost him once to play around natural selection. It does play a bit into parasite, but that's okay, I guess. Probably I shouldn't have boosted him actually. He would have probably killed the Magni with natural selection. So that might have just been a mistake. All things considered. Alright, so I guess it's hefty time. I think I need the points here, so I'm actually not gonna pull Actually, I may as well pull a fan, because he always goes on melee row, so... Yeah, this makes sense. Let's do this. We are a little bit far behind in points, so it might it might come down to bribery shenanigans. Ah, maybe it's fine. So... There's nothing here that's really good other than the Helga. We may as well take that. And I think we're going to win pretty cleanly. Although, we'll see what the bribery gets. It can be something kind of mediocre here, potentially. Uh, Triss is pretty good. The Adder's pretty okay. Seven. Do we win with the seven? We actually uh, we actually do not, I think. I think it's a tie if we take that. So we may as well just take the Triss. It's always better. And it can even create a tactic for us. Yeah, I mean, this is just easy. Easy enough. A little bit scary there. A little bit scary. We probably could have had a bit of a safer win by actually... Um, pushing a little bit around too. I was just very scared of the predatory dive. It was kind of very, uh, very worrying. Thing is, we could have just, you know, got more value from having the leader uh, advantage on him there um, by pushing around too a bit more, but that's fine. All in all, pretty decisive win, even if it came down to not bricking bribery, but you're never really going to brick bribery against monsters, so that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into the next game and see if we can win again. And actually, another monster matchup, it looks like, is going to be the next game. We'll see. Maybe we can play this one a little bit differently and see if we can get the win regardless. Or maybe we'll play it the same. We have a kind of similar hand to the previous game in terms of having a lot of bad cards. Let's get rid of Afan. And then we could probably get rid of one of these tactics since we've got the soldier synergy but no tactic synergy. We can probably get rid of battle prep. Ah, uh, maybe Tawny Joust. Battle prep might actually be useful onto one of our crossbowmen. So we'll see. This time we might not actually need to commit Raymond. Could potentially use him later on as a, a tempo play. We'll see how that goes. We're really getting the uh, crash course in how to deal with monsters today, it looks like. <laughs> okay, so Egon, we don't have an answer for that, so let's just start with Magni, I think. We could, you know, ping the armor a bit, but 
you know, and probably eventually kill it, but then he can just eat it and get out. Most likely. Alright, one crossbow, let's commit it. We might end up just playing a few bad cards here, really. You know, two more bad cards, for example. Uh, I do have some pretty good cards in my hand, so maybe battle prep and spim and then pass is the play. We can roll decree out one of our other engines, so we have kind of access to some really good cards. Hopefully he'll play some more kind of power, and then won't be too worried. I really want to get that invocation for the beast, that'd be nice. Okay. He's going pretty heavy on the points right now. Let's play that battle prep, I think. If we need to pass, then alright, we'll, we'll have to take that if he slams another big card here. But right now we're fine to just play on, and we should be winning long rounds with Helga and stuff. There's a Goliath, so he's really, really pushing tempo and just trying to force me out right now. It's kind of okay, we've got a lot of big unconditional cards from him. Although Monsters kind of has a big supply of those, so it's not too big of a deal. We also haven't got Lava from him, and Lava are quite scary. It's a good thing we didn't commit Raymond, because we would never have had enough points here, I think, to win the round. And we need that Raymond to deal with Lava probably in round two. So definitely this can get a bit scary. For example, if he has double Lava maybe, and a lot of ways to proc them, not many spells, then that's going to hurt. But doing the quick maths there, we just don't really have enough to catch up ever. Unless we play Stefan probably, but Stefan bribery to win that round seems a bit overcommittal. When he's already committed so much. Right, so we have the Yen, that's quite nice. We could probably get rid of Diviner, it doesn't do too much in this matchup. Magni Division also doesn't though, so maybe get rid of that. At the same time it is a soldier, so that's kind of a benefit. I'll get rid of the Diviner. And then probably Tawny Joust, although Tawny Joust with Helga's good. Not in, not particularly good in this situation, because we can't really open with Helga. Oh no, we got a fan, that's quite bad. Obviously we would have liked one of the better cards. I think that's the second time we've bricked a fan round two. Oh well. We'll see if we can hold on here. He's going to do quite a nasty bleed, probably. But we do have some cards that can punish it. And we're probably going to be forced to commit stuff on this round, I imagine. First things first, we want to do a Raymond, just to get the tempo back, tempo advantage back. Oh, I played on the wrong row actually, that was quite silly of me. Should have gone on the uh, on the back row, that might actually cost me, because my mana is uh, range locked obviously. Oops, big mistake there, but hopefully it'll be fine. We probably can still afford to play Magni and wait on that mana until very late into the round, so we hopefully won't lose too much. Magni might even just die anyway, so... Maybe it won't be too important. Wow, he's actually just going to take the armor off that, which is pretty nice for us. We don't have a way to re-enable it, but that's not the end of the world. We just kind of play another one of these crossbowmen. And I suppose maybe I should have been damaging the drone. I just wanted to keep Peter value alive in case we want to take him. But realistically, it's probably better to keep inv invocation value alive. Well, it looks like he's going to give the invocation value to me anyway. That's quite nice. Alright, I think it's Magni time. Just get it rolling. It might die immediately. <laughs> it's nice that we snipe that. Kind of denies a rush. And right now he's already used two leader charges. So his leader is kind of quite mediocre at this point. Three points. This is what I really don't like about this swarm deck. It feels very... Uh, you know, you're really kind of lacking points with that. But you have a lot of cars that make up for it, I suppose. Alright, I guess we just slam more soldiers, to be honest. I don't think we're in a particularly scary position right now. What is it now? Kind of just play, relax, we have engines on the board, he doesn't. Every extra turn he plays here we're kind of getting value that he isn't. Oh, and there's the beast, that's a really good invocation target for us. So I think we'll just take that. Gonna be a killer card, we can probably play that this round even. It's just another engine, another threat that they have to deal with, and they don't have enough removal really to deal with everything. Looks like my Magni Division's actually getting a fair amount of value, which is quite funny. I think it's probably Helga time now. Again, we just don't want to overcommit. 
So if we have to play Stefan and Bravery, we, we can do that. But if not, we, we'd rather just play, you know, Helga, Menno to take the round. He's probably going to push us, you know, pretty much all the way. So, oh wow, we get the Osrel. So that means we're pretty happy committing the Stefan Bribery package, I think, at this point. Um, now, he has already used Parasite, which means we don't have to boost Stefan. We can just leave him as is. He'll die anyway to Imgur's Wrath if the opponent has that. And if he does, it's, you know, kind of painful. But remember, we still have this engine ticking, so... And we have a big leader to gain points should we need. So now we're going to be bribery. We don't really need to hold on to it since we don't have Stefan anymore. Oh wow, good good options here. I think probably this Immolith is the best and safest. Just big points on one of our guys. Also plays around Glusty, which he's presumably wanting to do. Uh, and I think in that line of playing around Glusty, I'll also boost my unit here. Just to keep it alive, keep it safe. Because he's probably going to want to go in a bit here. We'll leave the Osrel open to being petered. And I think I'll use one more charge actually to really deny the... Uh, we can firstly deny Igni, why not? But also just get ahead on even. So now we actually gain our card. And that's really nice. And the Glusty is never going to be enough. Particularly if he doesn't use leader charges. He is going to go for a heat wave onto Magni. But that's, you know... Pretty pitiful, really. We're going to be a card up with a better leader again. And this time it's an even shorter round. And we have a lot of power cards still available. We're top decking into the beast, which at this stage of the game isn't going to be too good, actually. But he's going to commit two leader charges, making this Glusty kind of bad next round. That's good for us. doesn't really matter how much he commits here. It's never going to be enough to overcome this Menno play. So we kind of got to work out what the least kind of committal way to take this round is. I think it does involve Raw Decree because if we just play a Tactic, it, it won't be enough unless we use Leader Charges. So Raw Decree and how many points are we going to need here? We get two, so we need eight points from the Decree. Is there a clean way to make eight? I think it just has to be... I mean, it actually could be the Beast. The Beast is kind of suboptimal next round, and we're top decking into it. But right now it does represent 8, so I think I'll play the Beast. And uh, that will get us ahead nicely. And get out of here. Yeah, you know, it might be a, an okay card next round. It'll probably be 6, 8, 10, whatever. But I'm just looking at it like I needed 8 points in that situation. What card gives me 8 points? To be fair, Peter might, might have been the play uh, in reality. Maybe I'm just... Being a bit too mathy on that. And this is a bit of a terrible hand, to be fair. We kind of didn't draw into any of our power, which is a shame. You know, we've got these these cards we'd like to see, but I think we'll still be okay, most likely. I'm going to start with that Tortoise. Proactive play. You know, playing sixes and sevens isn't too great, but we do have a nine-point leader, and we do have the answer, potentially, to stuff that he can have. Uh, I think this is a Tawny Joust. He's already used Heatwave and Wrath, so there's no Tool Punish left. Just, you know, shield a bit from the uh, the bleeding. And I want to Peter before Spearmanning, so we're kind of hoping he'll have an A-Rush or something here. But most likely he doesn't have anything other than Glusty, right? With that in mind, let's just play Spearman here. Uh, probably don't want to hit the Night Wraith, that'll just give him points. But we can do this. And we're kind of just countering the Glusty at the end, so, you know, we have a pretty terrible hand here, but he used most of his power on the bleed, including a lot of his leader charges, so he also has a pretty terrible hand. And to be honest, we got pretty unlucky with the draws there, but ended up being completely fine. That was, that was even a cleaner win than the previous one. So. All in all, this deck is really favoured against monsters, so, you know, don't take this to mean the deck is super OP or whatever. Um... Yeah, you can definitely struggle in some other matchups, and unfortunately I'm not able to show you any more gameplay with this deck. But if you want gameplay, then maybe go out and go and check out one of my Twitch streams from the previous days where I was playing uh, this deck. That being said, deck in the description. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.